I'd like to invite Barack Obama and congressional leaders here to Stung Munchi in Cambodia. This is the country's largest garbage dump right outside Phnom Penh. And it's also the toxic workplace for hundreds of desperate Cambodians. Obama has signaled that he wants to tighten labor standards and trade agreements. That makes sense from an American perspective. After all, most of us are aghast at the idea of supporting sweatshops in poor countries. But look again. The anti-sweatshop logic is very well-meaning and utterly misguided. Put yourself in the sandals of a poor Cambodian working here, scavenging through the filth for plastics and metals to resell for five cents per pound. On a recent trip here, I met many children. Some of them walked on the pile in sandals or even in bare feet. Plastics. I collect plastics. I want to go to school, but we need money for rice. There are no safety regulations or child labor protections here. There's no government oversight for working conditions. As the families rush to the trucks, some drivers plow through without regard to the human lives around them. Injuries are common, and there have been deaths. What you can't tell in this video is that the stink is incredible, and the toxic smoke burns the eyes. It's hard to spend a few minutes here, yet some families scavenge here for years, sometimes even living in makeshift homes on the smoking pile. My legs. My legs hurt the most because of the glass. Sweatshop is a dirty word for us in the West, and all the criticisms of sweatshops are justified. I sure wouldn't want to work in one. But in the world's most impoverished countries, even a sweatshop job beats the alternatives, construction, prostitution, or scavenging. Nearly all of the people with whom I spoke at the dump consider factory work an improvement, maybe even a dream job of sorts. I'd like to work in a factory, because then I could be in the shade. Manufacturing also offers one of the best hopes for mass employment in a poor country. Sweatshops are how East Asia raised living standards. But in the poorest countries, there is very little manufacturing, and efforts to raise the bar and improve labor standards make it even less likely that manufacturers will move to the poorest countries. When we fight sweatshops and insist on improved labor standards, we tend to push manufacturing to well-run, capital-intensive factories in more developed countries like Malaysia or Mexico. If we want to help the world's neediest people, we would seek more labor-intensive manufacturing in Africa and in the poorest countries of Asia, such as Cambodia. As it happens, Cambodia has some good, well-run factories that do adhere to labor standards. But as a result, the cost of production is somewhat higher, and some factories have closed down. And meanwhile, there are countless people who can find no work other than as scavengers. This woman says she's worked at the dump since 1979. I want to work in a factory, but I don't know how to sew. She's hoping things will be different for her son. I don't want him here. I don't want him to be like me. But the odds aren't good, and she says she hasn't been able to give him a bath since he was two years old. I know it sounds strange to say so, but if we care about the poor, shouldn't we actually be campaigning for sweatshops? And President Obama, if you raise labor standards so that fewer manufacturing jobs go to the poorest countries, aren't you consigning more people to even worse jobs, such as scavenging in a dump? In Cambodia, for The New York Times, I'm Nicholas Kristof.